Hi, and uh, welcome back to the Point and Click Devlog, an ongoing series in which closely inspecting everything you can see is quite often the only true way to success. Today I'm going to talk about endings, specifically how the hell do you end a point and click adventure game. So I've had to do some rethinking in the last little bit. In my quest to draw all of the backdrops ever, I've now closed in on the last few rooms in the game and swiftly came a bit unstuck when deciding exactly what should go in them. And this is my fault. When I first set up my big overarching puzzle dependency chart, I think I rushed the ending. I just put a real simple puzzle in there as the last major thing you do one that I deemed to be fine or adequate and then put that process to bed and move swiftly on to drawing. So I've now hit a roadblock where I can't draw those final rooms until I rethink those final puzzles. And it spurred me to think about final puzzles or at least the puzzles of the end game of point and click adventure games as a whole because I think they're a tricky thing to get right. The thing about point and click games, and I think part of the reason people like them, is that they're quite stress-free environments, right? They're quite cosy and slow paced and comforting, which is something that conflicts quite harshly with traditional thinking around how a game should end. In most game genres, the end of the game is where the tension, the action and the pace ramp up to their natural zenith. You've got the biggest boss, the toughest platforming challenge, or the hardest race. The end of most games will leave your controller sweaty and your heart pounding, which makes perfect sense for an awful lot of titles. But how do you carry over that sense of urgency into a point and click adventure? Well, maybe you just shouldn't. In researching this video, I took to Twitter, the Adventure Gamers Forum and this channel's own Discord server and asked what people thought were the worst final puzzles or segments from point and click games old and new. I got a host of responses, but a couple of comments really hit the nail on the head, like this one from forum user Viovis. It seems like many developers think it's good game design to throw a very hard, borderline unsolvable puzzle or action segment at the player near the end of their games. Maybe the rationale behind such thinking is that the player may not want the game to end, or may feel that it was too short without spending hours on solving a difficult puzzle or managing a timed action sequence. Talk about counterproductive thinking, I hate that kind of game design. Fellow forum user Tomimpt says, The problem with puzzles is that it's pretty hard to make them feel climactic. They aren't by nature similar to end boss fights that you can ramp up in order to make them feel more epic. And all the other responses uniformly cited two types of bad final puzzle, timed sequences and mazes. Ah, timed sequences. These obviously aim to emulate the tension found in other gaming genres, but I don't think you should really try and do that in an adventure game. I don't play these games to get an adrenaline rush, so the idea that everything should suddenly turn frantic to try and force that feeling of finality usually makes things feel totally awkward. That's not to say that games don't attempt this though, because lots of them do. Even great games suffer from bad final segments, and urgency manifesting as timed events is often the culprit. I recently replayed Gemini Roo, a great adventure game by Wadjet Eye Games, and even I have to admit that my enjoyment of it dipped slightly towards the end when things devolved into an endless series of shootouts that need precision timing and that reload a long way back when you fail. It's just not what I and I think other players are looking for when they choose this kind of game. The other kind of endgame puzzle that seems to grind everyone's gears is the dreaded maze. These often aren't the very final puzzle in a game, but you do see mazes pop up in everything from Monkey Island 1 to, well, Monkey Island 2, as a way of presenting a really hard puzzle that blocks the player from breezing through. And I'll tell you something, I fucking hate them. I'm not sure anyone likes them, in fact. A maze in an adventure game is just a frustration in the shape of a puzzle, and I vow never to put one in any game I make as a result. But it's funny, developers must know that players don't like these things. 
They must know that timed sequences and mazes aren't fan favourites and yet they keep cropping up as series staples. Is that just because they're exactly that, staples? Or is it because they seem to be the only way to ramp up towards a climax? And more importantly, is there a more elegant way to do things? Well, if urgency isn't the answer, and you know, nor are mazes, then what's left in terms of making something feel final? What works? That's what I've been thinking about, and I've come to the conclusion that the most important thing is to provide a sense of accomplishment. To me, there are two possible ways to go about this. The first is just to present the player with a really difficult puzzle, but that alone can run the risk of being obtuse for the sake of obtuseness. And also, by the end game, do you really want the puzzles to get infinitely hard? As Viovis put it on my Adventure Gamers forum post, I think a game's difficulty curve, at least in story-driven games, should peak somewhere around the middle or three quarters into the game. That far into a game, I usually want to focus more on the story instead of dealing with ever more difficult puzzles. This reminds me of indie darling platformer Celeste, in which the difficulty ramps up to crazy heights near the end, before presenting you with a relatively straightforward final level. And the reason is simple, you know? Letting you revel in how good you've become at the game is much more satisfying than squaring off against even more challenge. So if the first method of bringing about that sense of accomplishment is just to be difficult, the second, as I see it, is to use some element of repetition to test a player's memory. Repetitious elements in games, films, books, whatever you like, they reward observant participants, and they nicely bookend proceedings with a kind of cyclical nature. I think Monkey Island 2 actually does this quite well. In the final rooms of that game, you figure out you need to make a rudimentary version of the voodoo doll from Act 1. In Act 1, you need to collect something of the thread, something of the head, something of the body, something of the dead. That's a bra, a toupee, some spit, and a bone. And at the end of the game, you have to collect similar things, but it's different objects collected through different means. It's cyclical and rewards your memory rather than being overly obtuse. That's not to say that Monkey Island 2 isn't without obtuse puzzles, and not to mention the fact that that whole ending section does have a timed element to it. But this particular puzzle is elegant in terms of the qualifiers we've already laid out. So, with that all said, what am I going to do with my game? Basically, steal that formula, I think. My original puzzle, the one that I hastily came up with just so I could put an end to my planning, was rubbish. So rubbish that I'm not even going to mention it here. So I've scrapped that and created a mini quest across a few rooms that more or less recreates one from a big part of the earlier game. Will it be perfect? Probably not. But I can tell you this it will be better than having the player need to do something against the clock, and it will be better than a maze. Anyway, that's pretty much it for me for another episode, except for the next few seconds in which I die a little inside and explicitly ask you if you might consider subscribing. So according to my channel analytics, some 70% of the viewers here aren't actually subscribed. That either means the content really is shit or that new viewers just can't be bothered to subscribe and if the latter sounds like you, fair enough, I've been there. But I promise you this, if you do click that subscribe button now, I'll try my level best to make it worth your while. Once again we do also have a Discord server for the channel because that's a thing people do now. It's a burgeoning little club full of fellow point and click developers and it's a good source for mutual support. There's also now a point and click devlog Twitter account too, because I figured that would be a good place to share some screenshots and work in progress assets. I've put a link to both of those in the description below and I hope to see you there. If not, no worries, I will see you in the next one. Bye.